Hi, I am Chandrasekhar Gupta and we are discussing programming concepts. Have you ever used Tinder? I know this is a kind of weird question, but we will try to discuss some concept which will be used in the development of this application. Suppose you are trying to match two profiles based upon some parameters. While doing so, if you are matching for a male profile, you have to match all the female profiles which has suited him. In this while you are looping over in some cases by by means of an accident you tend to come across a male profile then it instead of coming out or instead of terminating the program it would be better if i have some special case or where can i ignore a certain possibility that can be done with the help of continue statement or if you want to break the execution in between can be done with the help of break along with this there are some of the concepts which people generally tend to uh, ignore or misconcept as well let's try to look at all of them in detail now we will try to look at if condition generally when we have if condition if we write if of 0 it will become or it will be translated to false if you write any element other than 0 1 5 any other element which is greater than 0 it will be translated to true and the statement will be executed If you remember we have discussed that a condition in C programming language actually returns 0 or 1 if it is true it returns 1 if it is false it returns 0 so if we write any condition like a if we are comparing it with 5 if it is equal or if it is true it will return 1 if it is false it will return 0 based upon this the loop will be entered most of us while writing the program we will try to confuse between comparison and assignment operator instead of writing double equal to in most of the cases we will write single equal to this actually turns out to assignment instead of comparison what actually happens was here the value of 5 will be assigned to a and this statement will be changed to if of 5 and this will always be true our intention was to execute the statements if the value of a and the value of 5 are equal so be careful while you are trying to use comparison statement in if conditions let's try to discuss this if else statements if we are having a condition all the conditions are written inside this block now if we are having multiple conditions we can use else if we are actually having if and then else if we are having multiple conditions then we are writing one more if and one more else always else has to be accompanied with if if you generally write else without any if statement then it will generate an error so every else has to be accompanied with if if we have entered in this block then it will try to come out of everything and in this if else structure initially we are having a condition which is if if the condition is true we will enter the block if the condition is false again we are having another condition if the condition is true it will enter if this condition is false again we are having another condition if the condition is true and it, this process repeats if it is true it will directly come outside of the entire if else statements so even if the condition at the first if statement is satisfied after executing the statements whatever is written here it will come out of the entire if else block it will never execute any other statement you also need to remember one thing sometimes if we place semicolon by mistake at the end of this if condition or at the end of the loop it will treat it as the body of the loop even though nothing has been in this place this nothing will be executed as the body of the loop and these statements will be executed normally like the other sequence of the program let's try to understand this with the help of an example if we have if a greater than 10 by mistake if i placed a semicolon over here i am trying to print a is greater than 10 now if the value of a is 5 then this condition is failed but we have placed a semicolon then it thinks that this is the body that has to be executed it will execute this and the control will shift to this position this will be printed onto the screen our intention has completely gone wrong with the presence of the semicolon so be careful while you are placing this semicolon this is the case that we encounter mostly with this if condition and with for loops let's try to understand about switch case you need to remember in the case of switch we can have an integer or a character we cannot have a floating point number or something because as we have discussed floating point number cannot be stored in a precise way actually what happens was if you declare switch of 
and this one will be compared. If both of these are equal, then whatever is written in this case will be executed. If we encounter a break, it will try to come out of the entire switch case. If we don't encounter break or if we have forgot writing break over here, then whatever is present in this case, this will be executed followed by that case 2 will be executed and whenever the break encounters, then only it will try to come out of the loop. Similarly, default actually becomes true when nothing of this case has been solved or if you have forgot break statement in all the above cases, then it will also come to the default and whatever is present in the default will also be executed. You can write default at any part of the switched case, but if it encounters default before it encounters the exact value, if you write default before case 1, if it actually becomes valid for default, if it has a break statement, it will try to come out of the switch case and it will never execute case 1. So, default is generally placed at the end of the program. You will generally find questions where the break statements are missed or they will try to replace the value which is written over here with the floating point or something. Let's try to understand macros. The macros are defined by using this hash defined keyword followed by any identifier that can be written here and the replacement. The identifier in throughout the program will be replaced with this replacement. If we see in this example, max will be replaced with 5, 5 times 5 is 25 and output will be 25. Let's take another case. Now the value of max has to be substituted with this expression. Don't try to compute the value and then substitute. What you have to do was you have to take the entire expression and substitute in the equation. According to the order of precedence and associativity, first 3 times 2, 6, followed by 6 into 5, 30, and then 3 times 2, 6. Here we have a 5 left out, which will be 41. But if you compute the value initially, 3 times 2, 6 plus 5, 11, 11 times 11 is 121. But the correct answer in this case would be 41. So, you take the same expression, substitute it inside the program, and then finally find the result. Now, let's try to talk about break, continue and go to. If you have this for loop, if you write this break command over here, the value will just come out of the loop. At any part of the loop or irrespective of the i value, let's say i value is initially 5, we have encountered a break statement over here, it will try to terminate or it will try to come out of the loop without checking any other condition. That happens with break. But if you have continue, in the case of continue, if the value of i is 5, then it will be returned to the state of checking the condition. The value of i will not be incremented because after the body only will be having increment and from increment we will be moving to the condition. We have discussed everything of this in the flowchart. Just try to recollect the same flowchart which we have already discussed. In the case of continue, instead of moving away to the increment or modification, it will move back to the condition. So, the i value will be 5 and you will move back to the state where we need to compare the value or where we need to perform any condition and based upon that if the condition is true, the loop will be executed or if the condition is false, it will try to come out of the loop. Finally, we will be having go to. Suppose, if we have go to a particular label, if we have encountered this line at any part of the program, it will try to check for this label throughout the program and whenever we have came across this particular label, the control flow will be shifted. The control flow will be actually similar to the function. Using go to is not at all advisable in programming. But in the case of any logic, if you encounter go to label, just remember the control flow shifts from this line to the label, similar to the way it happens in case of functions. Finally, let's try to talk about logical operators. If we try to combine two operations using or, or AND, we know that AND is actually true when both the statements are true or is true if any one of the statement is true. So, if you are comparing a particular condition, here the first statement is true. If we have an OR operator, it will not execute the second statement as the entire result has been calculated to true. Similarly, if we are having AND operator and if the first statement is false, the second statement will not be executed irrespective of its result as it will be directly evaluated to false. Now, you have seen a lot of misconceptions and if you make correct use of them inside your program, you can make it more meaningful and more easier. That's all for today. Goodbye.